This is Logic Bomb, and you're watching Behind the Beats. How'd you get into uh, production? Uh, well, uh, I'm gonna try to make a long story short. Uh, I, when I was very young, I guess about five years old, um, you know, I was the type of kid that I, I used to uh, listen keenly to everything that my mom was playing, which because in my earlier years, either I was back and forth from DC or California, like, I was getting used to hearing different types of music, you know. Uh, we w we stayed listening to Spyro Gyra, Tears for Fears in California, but yet we would come back home to D.C. and be listening to Go Go and stuff like that. Uh, for one holiday, my mom got me a turntable and two records for my, you know, for the, you know, for a present, and. Uh, Ever since then, I was I was hooked with music. Growing up over the years, you know, um, I would find a Casio keyboard here and there, you know, and or me and my brother would uh, beatbox, you know, on tape over top of some fake chords, which we didn't know how to play, or whatever like that. Uh, but that really got me into production, which I didn't know that's what it, I was doing then. I would just do it, you know. I would just make my own music. Who are your uh production influences oh pr okay production influences um i would say first off your top five okay top five okay um uh jay dilla first first jay dilla because i grew up listening to that guy and i didn't know who he was but i was so influenced like the soundtrack to my life contains a lot of jay dilla beats so uh i would say him um Next, it will probably be um, Premier. I always loved his drums. I, I always was into how he chopped things up, you know. Um, and 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 how I chop things up now is is kind of almost like I, I I have it in mind like okay that's how a Premier would chop it. But DiBiase, DiBiase, he's a new cat, but he's one of my. I, I'm influenced by his stuff, like the way he chops things up, even if it's easy stuff, the way he chops it up and make it sound real, you know. Um, and I will say, uh, I will say too, also uh, Odyssey, Odyssey, right here from the from the DMV, Odyssey. Uh, that guy, just if you look at some of his recent projects, the way that he's been, like, kind of, like he used to do. Almost like boom bap, you know, he used to do boom bap beats. Now he's kind of like going on to different melodic scene type stuff like I was talking about. Uh, and Dame Funk. Dame Funk. Uh, from L.A. His stuff, if you, if, when I listen to his stuff, I think of my childhood in California. That's what I think about. And, uh, and he just, his chords are amazing. Stuff that I would want to chop up, but I almost feel forbidden because it's just like I want to learn how to play keys the way he does. <laughs>
people think this is weird, which Roddy Rod brought this to my attention. I don't save any of my sounds. A lot of people are, why don't you save any of your sounds? Like I have the program disc, I got a few different sounds that I got that I saved offline and I stop using them. Like I don't I don't save any sound. Once I get it into the MP, chop it up, make a song, I don't save it after. And I think that's what keeps me creative. Like because I feel like if I'm using the same drum, if I'm using the same drum or something like that, you know, over time then it I'll get stuck into one, you know, and I think using the SP303 back in the day really caused me do you know I didn't know where to find memory cards you know so I just had to get a beat on you know make it you know get the sounds make the beat record it on tape or whatever and then turn it off and make something else so yeah let's talk about your process as, as far as production do you start with the with the sample you start with the drums or how do you how do you start working on a beat uh, a lot of times it depends. It depends on what uh, w what my feeling is. Sometimes I may uh, have drums in my head. You know, I may be tapping on something while talking on the phone. You know, playing with my fingers, and I'm like, okay, uh, let me try to emulate that um, that you know that combination of sounds or whatever on the MP or whatever. So I'll chop up some drums, or sometimes. I may just throw on a record, chop some sounds up, some Fender Rose or whatever up. Uh, not 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 even nothing necessarily in particular. Just chopping whatever a, a section of sounds that I really like, and then I'll you know I'll chop that up and truncate it the way that I want it, and then I'll throw some drums on top of that. And how I do it now without letting too many secrets out. Like, uh, I, I really like uh, addictive drums. And uh, so if I want something to sound live, then I'll go ahead and chop up something melodic. You know, uh, do the drums, uh, you know, off of addictive drums, make it sound live, and then do a bass line, which I'm not good at, at you know. As you, <laughs> but, uh, but that's basically my process. I never, I almost, I almost never like go to the MP like I know what I'm want to make unless I'm working with a, 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 a artist which a lot lately um, I'm working with an artist from VA uh, named uh, 85 Mind and a lot of his stuff is specific he wants specific sounds like this and so I'm finding myself having to look for certain sounds now so my process is becoming a little different for this particular artist or whatever Snare in there to throw people off balance, huh? You throw that snare in there to throw yeah, people off I'm balance. Yeah, I'm telling you, you know what? Uh, that's where the uh, the Dilla stuff. Uh, you know, I told you one of my pr production influences is Dilla, and um, at his transition, by the time uh, Donuts came out, and like Donuts was crazy, like the way he chopped everything, his stuff was off kilter. I like that imperfectness of of that album. The fact that it they weren't so you know he wasn't so concerned with old you know the the you know as far as it having to be quantized or it having to be you know uh, he wanted it crunchy and raw like he usually said you know but that's that's me that's that's my production too as far as I, you know um things being off kilter not necessarily being quantized or anything you know because I listen to jazz too big up to Jay Lane, by the way, a uh, very, very vicious DMV drummer and everything. And, uh, um, you know, 
that off kilter stuff that's what i go for as well so yeah that's what you hear in that that's what you hear in that. if you were trapped in the studio with an artist for a whole week to make an album <laughs> who would it be mf doom doom that's that's yeah um ever since i heard uh mad villain uh ever since i heard mad villain i've been like uh i i like you know i liked his vocal the way he mcs and stuff the way he raps and i was like if i if i work with a uh a, you know a mc it would be it'd be him uh, what you working with uh well as as equipment you know i got the the Akai products, <laughs> the NPC 2000 XL. I love this machine. I've had an MV8000 before, and uh, you know I, I love the um, the amount of sounds that it had. But I I actually sold that just to get the NPC back again because the feel of it. People try to be you know say stuff about it doesn't matter about the feel. I think it does. Uh, because you know and simplicity is good too i got like i said this was my first board i do use the boards uh i have used the boards but i don't really much anymore because i use uh, my little axiom 25 on reason or whatever vsts i have to get some sounds layered on my beats and um you know i got reason i have ableton live 8 which is a which is a vicious program, but I haven't mastered that yet. You know, big up to Roddy Rod for putting me on to uh, the Reaper because now I, that's my Pro Tools, that's my standard. You know, other than that, yeah, it's just basically the MP, the records, the VSTs with the MIDI controllers. I got the some extra pads or whatever, but put it on another channel, and then I'm ready to bang out some more drums. Thank you.